This is the Art Beauty Podcast, where we tell the real truth about the fake shit. I'm Amber. Today, my fabulous and gorgeous co-host is Carrie Benjamin. She is the founder of Stacked Skincare. And today, we are talking all about what has now become my absolute favorite beauty tool in the world. Um, and we're going to talk about the benefits of microblading. Uh, no, uh, dermaplaning. Dermaplaning. I'm sorry, it has been a long day. And I was I was like, no, dermaplaning, <laughs> not microblading. I, I can't get behind microblading, but dermaplaning, I can totally get behind two different things. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, right, because you mentioned that it was one o'clock and I was like, it must be pretty nice. How's the weather there today? It's beautiful, sunny Southern California. You know, yeah. that, that's what everybody always says. Um, I feel like we just miss out here in New York. I haven't seen outside, so I couldn't even tell you what is going on today. Um, but it's not pretty 70s. Living here, it's just pretty much always nice. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> rubbing salt in a wound. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, your, your background. Before we get into my favorite tool, let's talk a little bit about you know, what your, um, your background was that before you created Stacked? Um, well, prior to this career, I come from a, a digital media and high tech background as we're from Microsoft for a long time, but my whole life, ever since I literally can remember, so maybe three, four years old, I've had chronic and severe eczema and, um, I've had a lot of health issues as a result of it. My, um, you know, eczema is, um, an autoimmune disorder triggered by allergies and I'm sort of allergic to the planet. I mean, it's sort of a joke amongst my friends. It's like, just put me in a bubble. <laughs> and so one of the things that happens is it just throws up all over my skin. And um, so I've struggled a lot with my skin. Most of my life I've been on um, steroids and topicals and you just, you know, um, uh, sleepless nights with ice packs and things like that. And then in like, I think it's like in 2007 or 2008, um, I got a really bad MRSA infection. So what happens is, is um, people that have eczema, you know, we all have staph on our skin, but people like me, you know, we tend to scratch our skin. So we have open wounds and yeah. we already have a compromised autoimmune system. And so um, I, I got this really horrible MRSA infection that landed me in the hospital. I honestly thought I was going to lose my left arm without trying to be dramatic. It was actually pretty bad. And then I oh it kicked off a series of them and I was really, really sick this one year. And at that point, I just felt kind of powerless, but decided to turn it around. And I'm like, How? these doctors aren't helping me. They don't know what to do. I'm going to go be an esthetician, figure out how to help myself, figure out how to help other people and stop the madness, you know? And so that's really how I got to becoming an esthetician and into this business was just a real, real personal struggle. I Thank you so much for sharing. I had no idea. Um, I, I knew you were an esthetician, um, but wow, what a, what, what a powerful story. Thank you for sharing it with us. How old were you when you were when, land, like landed in the hospital? Um, I'm going to date myself here. <laughs> so I think this was, it was either in 2007 or 2008. So this was a while ago, yeah. um, in my late thirties. Um, you know, at the time I was in my late thirties. Um, and, um, you know, I became an esthetician, um, in, I got my license in 2012. So it's almost been 10 years. I thought you were still um, in your late third. I, I thought you were still in your thirties. I'm sorry, not late thirties. I'm, I'm blown away right now. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm well I'm, done. I mean, it's, you know what field and dermaplating are the, uh, fountain of youth is what, is what I think. Speed so, it up and fluff so, it off. <laughs> so you became an esthetician, um, which was like, I, I guess, kind of like a, 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 a mid career move, right? Um, and it's not easy. You have to go through some serious training and what is it to, how many hours of life before you get your license? Um, so in California, it's different by state, but in the state of California, it's 600. Wow. Um, so I went all in and got it done as quickly as I could. I think I got it done in like five months. Yeah. Um, but that's so a long was, time. It was, and while I was in school, um, I, I wasn't quite, I, I mean, it was weird because I come from this corporate background and I wasn't quite sure, you know, was I going to be an esthetician? Was I going to go sell a technology? Was I going to go work for a lab? I really wasn't quite sure, but I knew I needed some fundamental education. And I knew ultimately I did want a product line. 
And for me, I didn't want to be that high tech girl that had eczema and slapped a label on a bottle. It had no authenticity to it. It had no credibility to it. And it had no unique value proposition. And, you know, like I said in the beginning, what I really need to do is solve my problem, right. my health problem. So, um, but interestingly, while I was in school, I bought this really expensive um, microdermabrasion machine. It's called a silk peel. And I knew it was like, you know, it was like the Rolls Royce of, um, of microdermabrasion. And, uh, and so I started practicing on my friends while I was in school and they all thought I was crazy. Cause they're like, what are you doing? Like, you don't even have a life in this head. And I was like, right. come over and I got to figure this out because this is my new career. And like, once I get the paper, once I have my license, I want to know that I can take clients. Um, so, you know, I got into school and as soon as I was in school, I started, you know, working on treatments, um, on friends and my protocols on my own, as well as starting to build the business, you know, just some of the basics, you know, like getting a website down and getting a bank account and things like that. So, you know, I'm a self-funded entrepreneur and I've literally built this company with my hands from the ground up. And so I've just built it bit by bit by bit over the past Love 10 years. Love that. You know, we're talking about, um, microdermabrasion. Um, can you explain the difference? So, so microdermabrasion, um, and, and dermaplaning, Let, let's just start there. Let's start, um, microdermabrasion, quick run through of what that is, because that's not what our focus today, but quick run through. So, um, so they're both, um, f- forms of physical exfoliation. Um, uh, micro, microdermabrasion is usually got like a little tip and they have different, um, uh, gradients of variation on them. Um, and it's going to um, gently exfoliate the outer layer of um, your dead skin. Um, so, it, and it usually has, it has a suction to it. It's a right. vacuum. So it's like exfoliating while it's sort of like vacuuming your face, if you will. The thing that I loved about the silk peel technology and the machine that I still have is that simultaneously sucks and infuses. So it's actually treating your skin. So it's got, the, it's got these amazing serums to treat acne, hyperpigmentation and, and dryness. So while, so it's like a wet, um, moist, uh, microdermabrasion machine where, yeah, it's actually, it's generally exfoliating the dead skin, but it's simultaneously infusing, um, the serums. And so this is really where the foundation of, of my brand stack skincare came from. So I, I, I got this machine and from my, my, my previous background, I understood SEO, I understood marketing and digital marketing, right. et cetera. And so I knew that I could market this machine for skin specific concerns and, you know, start to build a client base. And it was more interesting to me to work on people with problem skin, just because of my, like, I had a lot of empathy about yeah. it. And like, and it just was, it's like more fun to work on, you know, like to help, to really help somebody like the most rewarding thing is to transform somebody's skin. Um, well, I always say that I'm like, you know, it, 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 it's almost like color cosmetics, right? So color cosmetics, it's that instant, you know, wow, you've got, you've, you had acne and now we can't see it because we've covered it up. Skincare is one of those things that takes a little bit, it, it takes more time. It takes patience, but wow, you can see some incredible transformations, but more so when you've got problematic skin. The ability to help people. Right. So yeah. because I, I'm, I'm, I used to have eczema on my face and I always felt really ugly. Uh-huh. And so I really understand, you know, coming from that place. And so being able to help my clients that way, but anyway, so I got this machine and it really did a good job of targeting acne and hyperpigmentation. And then I started to realize, well, what if I combine it with peels? Like, let me do that. Yeah. And then I got a better result. And then I was like, you know, I'm really into dermaplaning. And this was before anybody was really even dermaplaning. And, um, I was like, I'm dermaplaning and I'm going to start my treatments this way. And then, you know, and I would, and so I just kind of kept building upon these different modalities. And so I was combining or stacking. And so that's where oh, stack skincare was born skincare. was combining or stacking peel serums and tools. And that's really the, um, you know, the core of the brand is combining these modalities and these active ingredients for maximum efficacy and, and, you know, uh, targeting different active ingredients that is specific to whatever your skin concerns are. I'm going to ask us today to focus on the dermaplaning. Um, and, and we can bring you back to talk about some of the others now that I, I'm understanding that the importance of stacking and that really you're going to have more, um, it's going to be more efficacious if you are doing multiple procedures. But today, I really just want to focus on dermaplaning um, because I feel like this has been a life changing. All right. That's a lot. Okay. But it has been a game changer in my skincare routine and and more specifically in my makeup routine. Um, So let's talk about what dermaplaning is for people who don't know. 
Dermal planing is another form of a physical exfoliation. It's a single edge sharp blade and it's um, you're, it's designed to remove, it's an exfoliation technique, right? So it's gonna remove the dead skin. Obviously it's also gonna take off the peach fuzzes, which we call vellus hair. Um, right. in, the, in a professional setting, we use a 10 blade scalpel. And what I did was I tried to, I, I designed a tool that I really wanted to mimic that result that you'll get in the spa experience or in a dermatology experience, but you can safely do it at home. And we can talk about some of the features in the tool and how we achieve that. But, you know, it's a single edge sharp blade. So it's not shaving your face. It's not like using like a Gillette razor you've got, you know, and it's going to, it's going to uh, significantly remove more dead skin. And typically you do derma cleaning on clean, dry skin and the yeah. drier, the better, because you're going to remove. Sometimes I see people doing it with oil and you're really just kind of no. not, you're just kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we, before we get into sort of like the how tos, um, yeah. you know, my own personal experience. Now, uh, people who are fans of this podcast, if you've been listening to me a long time, you've heard me talk about dermaplaning before. There was another tool that I was using that I was loving, and I, but I used to be honest and say, maybe there's dead skin cells coming off, but I really was using it because when it got rid of the vellus hair, um, which by the way does not grow back thicker. Vellus hair will not grow back thicker. Um, but when you get rid of it, it everything lays on smoother. Your products are gonna go. And it's just, if you think about it, just like if a guy shaves his face, right? If he has a beard, the products that he puts on this lower part are gonna have to penetrate more. Now, I'm not saying that Vellus hair is a beard, but in some ways it's the same thing. You've got that covering. But what I really noticed is when I put my foundation on, it just looked so darn smooth. It was so beautiful. Um, but I used to call it my lady shaver, right? Because I essentially, I was just using it to remove hair. Enter your product. So we met when we were doing, you were on New Beauty Live and this was in one of the VIP boxes and we met, I got the tool and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, no, 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 it really gets rid of dead skin cells. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. I watched your video, however, and then I used it and this one, so I, so this has become my new favorite. I use this for me, it's once a week. Um, like you said, on clean, dry skin. And this is the one, not only do I see the vellus hair coming off, which by the way, I'm not a hairy person, but when I started to see this come off, it's like you're a teddy bear. I mean, hair is going to come off the dead skin. It is so wonderful and at the same time, so disgusting because I actually see the, you know, and, and listen, if, if you're listening to this, I highly suggest you go to Stack Skincare's website and look at the video because you will really see the skin coming off. I tried to put it up on my social media. It's hard to get that close, um, but it, it, it takes off skin. It's a sharp blade. It's the, the other tools on the market are a blade guard. Yeah. Um, and so you can kind of almost run your finger up and down them and you're really not going to cut yourself. The thing about those is they're, they're more designed to, sh to, to shape your brows. And the reason why I don't like them for dermaplaning is they're just not that sharp. And so it can right. cause a lot of irritation. And that's why I think some people shy away from dermaplaning is they're, they're just not using the right tool, which is you really do need a sharper blade. Um, otherwise it will irritate your skin. Um, but I, I do it weekly too. And, you know, I always say if I was stuck on a deserted Island and there was only one thing I could have, it would have to be my dermal painting school. <laughs> this is, I mean, you know, I, 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 I placed an order for like a ton of refills because you, you want to keep this sharp, like you said. Um, but, but listen, I'm keeping it honest here. I would say this tool is not for everybody. Um, oh, and so Siri is, is, is gonna, I think that it's something that it's not that everybody's skin type can't use, but I do think you need to have, like, if you have shaky hands, this probably is not going to be a great tool for you. Would you agree? I mean, because it, it's, it's, sharp. It, it, it's a razor blade. It's sharp. It's sharp. But, and especially the little guy too. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I think if you have shaky hands, probably not putting a, um, you know, a sharp blade in your hand, but um, this is what you want to do like, when you're like drunk. Right. You know, like yeah. sometimes you're like, oh, I'm a little bit, I'm home. I'm bored. Yeah. Let me go do my beauty yeah. stuff. Listen, I, I, that's when I do a lot of stuff too. This is yeah. not, yeah. this is not the yeah. time that's to more do of a this mask kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, what is that? Like one of those foot peels, mm. Yeah. this you want to do 
clear headed, sober, um, sober <laughs> clean skin. I'm sorry. Is that bad to say, but listen, you got to keep, this is why we, I love this podcast because we keep it real here. Right. So if you want to have a glass of wine and that's when you do your beauty thing, or listen, some people just wind down with a glass of wine at night and then go and do your nighttime routine. Cause I do this at night. Don't do it after that glass of wine. Um, um, but I find it's definitely sharper, but that's, I will say that's... it is a sharp blade, but once I learned and watched, and I'm, I'm going to have you demo the right way to do it. Cause I think it's important. And once I saw that, um, and the fact that you really are kind of almost laying this perpendicular to your face, right? So you're kind of laying it flat 45 degree angle. The reason we have this, um, white beveled piece is so you always want to dermaplane at a 45 degree angle. If it's, if it's, if it's parallel, it's really but like the, but the, but the angle is going to be following this, this bevel. I don't, it's hard exactly. For to say. And that's why so, we designed it that way to make it yes. easy. So once you know that, and you kind of are laying, I, I guess I'm going to say flat against your face. You're not, it's at a 45, but when you're laying the bevel flat against your face, um, and pulling the skin taut, this is going to become your new best friend. So Carrie, why don't you sh take us through how we would do this and the right ways to do this? So first and foremost, like we said earlier, always clean, dry skin. And then the very, the next step I always say is make sure you're holding it with a good grip. Like we talked about, it is a sharp blade. Sometimes I see people like holding it like a fan brush and doing this thing. And I mean, you know, it's just, you're not going to get the best results. Number one. And number two, it's a little dangerous because, um, you know, I mean, so you don't have the, as much control. Thing, yeah, you just don't have the control. So I like to have it. And I, I usually have my index finger, like right at the end of the metal before where the, where the blade connects. Um, I'm left-handed. So I tend to start on my right side. We designed it so you can go up or down in a professional setting. Somebody would be laying down and I usually, I would always go in an upward motion. Um, I tend to kind of do a little of both on my own face just because, Same. um, it, it's easier and, you know, um, so anyways, you, whatever direction the blade is going in, you want your hand behind it. So basically wherever this white plastic piece is, make sure your hand is behind it. So you, what are we doing here? You want to put the blade on, I have a mirror right here. It'll it's okay. You don't need to really do it, but you can just talk us through it because I, you, you, you also you want, want to be doing this in front of a mirror. You and want if you have a close-up mirror. You want the blade at a 45 degree angle and you yeah, want to I, pull your hand and then just light, light feather strokes. You don't need a lot of pressure on this. Light feather strokes, strokes going down. And the, the other main point I want to bring up is you want to leave the blade on your skin while you're doing the treatment and then pick it up and then you can wipe it off and then resume. Because sometimes I see people kind of going like this too. And I mean, that's how you're going to nick yourself. So just, right. you know, hand behind the blade, 45 degrees, keep it on the skin, light feather strokes, and then pull it off the skin um, to, to, you know, to wipe off the dead skin and peach fuzz and then resume. So here are the things that I really, really want you to hear. You've got to pull the skin taut. You weren't kidding about that. And when you say light strokes, I found that I get the most dead skin. And also, look, did I nick myself a few times the first time using this? I did. We keep it honest here. I'm still going to tell everybody at home, this is by far my favorite tool. You know I don't lie about this stuff. You know this isn't sponsored. I brought her on and was like, P.S., this is my favorite tool. But small, light and you don't need to press into it. You will be amazed. Now, each of these blades um, lasts what? About, like about a month, like four or five times? Yeah, I say to swap. I usually, I'm like you, I, I dermaplane monthly and I usually swap, I mean, weekly and I usually swap them out monthly. Um, you know, like a razor, a doll. So yeah. um, they, they come in a three pack and it's 23 bucks. So you know, it's like seven bucks a month. It um, is so, I'm telling you, oh, I can't wait. Really I hope Yes, which is really nice too, because um, I feel like this is something um, better for the environment. We, yeah. I, we always, I always design with sustainability in mind. So these are really like indestructible, beautiful aluminum handles um, with two replacement plates. And, um, and yeah, it'll last about a month. And then we also, you know, just came out just, just about six weeks ago. And people are loving this is this little precision blade. And this was designed to get like the nose, um, your brows and your upper lips and upper and lower yeah. lip. And I mean, we sold out of the first batch already. Um, and, uh, and it's really great, especially for people that have a lot of congestion on their nose. 
um, you know, you can really get that dead skin off and then, you know, put a, a peel on or something like, you know, salicylic acid that's going to help dislodge that and break right. up some of that, um, those blackheads. And, and so, so with this one, I remember you were, you, you sent it to me early on. Cause you were like, um, I, I want to beta test this. Um, I was nervous because I didn't feel like it had that same bevel guard, which it does. I did not cut myself with this. It's great. The beveled garden, it's it's more exposed because it's it's in, it's Smaller. intended to do those hard to reach areas. And yeah. we're like, well, if we put that on, then it's sort of so yeah, I know we 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 get we uh we I asked you to be my my guinea pig and make sure I, <laughs> that it well, was safe. But I'm, I, I, and and just so everybody's listening, like we're we, well, we're friends now, but in, in this show, friends, but but we I, I had met you just the one time. So this is not like a long standing. I don't want anybody because it's really important to me, like when I share my favorites that I'm like letting you know, I keep it real when I haven't tried something. This one I have tried and I wrote out to, to Carrie and was like, by the way, this became my new favorite dermaplaning device. Um, would you please come on and like, let's talk about it. Uh, but again, don't do it when you're drunk. And if you got shaky hands, might not be for you. Also, I think if you probably have like a lot of like textured skin. Skin is great, actually, especially if you're going to combine it with like um, peels and, and microneedling. Because if you've got like, if you're if you're struggling with like, I think what you're talking about is like pitting or if you had like some text type of scarring, uneven texture. Yeah. Um, dermaplaning is great because, you know, if you're doing things to help speed up that cell turnover and then you're oh, stuffing gonna... off, eventually you're going to, yeah, you're going to, especially if you, if you do microneedling with it too, it'll help even out the tone and the texture of your skin. But maybe not like if you've got like cystic acne, right? You, Cause you don't want to, you don't want to nick anything. I would think. The cystic is actually fine because it'll actually be helpful. Cause you'll, you know, you're going to get that dead skin off and it'll help the products penetrate it's anything that's pustular and sitting on the top of the skin, you want to make sure you avoid because you don't want to cut it and spread bacteria. Um, just be careful if you have cystic and it's like a big lump, you know, um, but usually cystic is, you know, deeper in the skin. And so going over it and removing that dead skin, your products are going to penetrate deeper, which is one of the really great benefits of, you know, of dermal cleaning. So uh, cystic is fine. Be careful like in general, um, right. but if it's pustular, no. Don't and what that. about, you know, you, you mentioned before with eczema, um, things like rosacea, if you've got some of that, um, what thoughts? So, um, it depends. So, you know, if you're having an active inflammation, then avoid it. You know, if, if, if it's just an active inflammation and it's on your eyes, but your face is fine, like you could do it. So just use some common sense there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're actively inflamed, definitely do not do dermaplaning, allow your skin to calm down. Um, and then, you know, and then you can do it. And so, okay. So in addition to like, let's talk about like some of the other benefits other than your makeup going on smooth and looking so gorgeous, um, products penetrate deeper. What are some of the other things that we're going to see? So one of the things that I just absolutely love about dermaplaning is the instant results. You're instantly brighter and smoother. Um, and the reason why you're brighter is two reasons. One, you know, by taking that outer dead layer off, it is starting to, if you have any kind of dark spots, if, you, if it's from sun damage or if it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is left behind from trauma or lesions like acne, you know, it's really great at lifting that over time. And then also, um, you know, women, um, ethnic women tend to have, and they don't realize it, they have darker peach fuzz. And so um, when they dermaplane and remove that dead layer of skin and peach fuzz, their, their skin is really instantly a lot brighter. So is ours too, but you don't really realize that you actually might have a little bit of a darker um, hair. color to your, to your hair. And so, um, so yeah, the, the benefits really are, you know, it's instantly brighter and smoother. Your products are going to penetrate better. So it's going to make them work better. Um, and your makeup's going to go on a lot smoother but I just love those instant results and how easy and quick it is and pain-free. You know, I mean, I know I have some women that tell me that they do um, threading. I tried it once and I almost fell on the floor. I was in so much pain. I've never, I've never done it, but I used to get waxed, um, you know, in the, in the nether, in, in the nether regions and um, so painful. I finally got laser also so painful. And now it's just, there's not enough hair to have to deal with. Thank God. But yeah threading haven't tried it but that seems like it would be very painful and i mean really dermaplaning is an exfoliation technique that removes hair some people like to just use it for the hair removal but 
point being is it's quick, it's easy, and it's pain free. And if you do it at home, it's super inexpensive. Or you know, when you go to somebody like me, it's it's not cheap. Right, right. So, um, is there anybody like we said probably who should not be doing this? As far as you know, really shouldn't be doing this if you have a lot of active pustular acne. Um, if it's like you know pimple here or there, you know you can avoid it. If you if you're really dealing with a lot of acne, definitely do not do this yet. We need to clear up your acne first. Right. Um, and then also if you're obviously have some inflamed skin, like eczema, rosacea, psoriasis, anything like that, you know, don't do that. Um, but one of the things that's amazing about dermal cleaning is it's other than that, it's great for, you know, Everyone. all skin types, all skin can, and it's great for women that are pregnant too. And a lot of times women that are pregnant, they're struggling with, um, breakouts and dryness, and they can't use a lot of topical ingredients. So exfoliating with a dermal cleaning tool is safe and it's effective. And then it'll allow them to keep their skin clear and healthy and also a lot more hydrated because a lot of times people don't realize that dryness is caused from dead skin. So the dead skin is making you feel dry. It's, it's making the fine line show and it's compounding the problem because you can pile as much product as you want on there, but it's not breaking through that, that wall of dead skin. Right. So once you just exfoliate with the dermal cleaning tool, you instantly already feel more hydrated. And then it's like, just put on a, a hyaluronic acid or a moisturizer and your skin just like, you know, soaks it in and feels so good. So. I would say too, this is like, you know, we've got the holidays coming up. We're like kind of getting back out in the world. Um, what I like about this too, like you said, instant results. Um, and also you can do this day of as you're going out somewhere, right? I wouldn't do it the first time. All the time. Of, I'll do well, a, I'll do more. If I have something going on, I'll, I'll dermaplane and apply, you know, my HA and a little face oil and it's just like nice and dewy. And I might, I usually just mix it with a little bit of, um, a tinted moisturizer. Uh, yeah. To go. Well, you have gorgeous skin. So, um, you know, Heels and dermaplaning. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to thank you so much for being on. And we have to bring you back on to talk about microneedling, to talk about microdermabrasion, all of the other things. And you've got some really wonderful tools in your toolkit. But I, I did want to focus on this because I'm being selfish and because it's my favorite thing. And because I hope that you at home will try this because I think that it, it it just, it's really an aha difference um, for me, especially with the makeup. Um, Carrie, if people want to know more about this, if they are ready to try their Stack Skincare Dermaplaning device, where should they go? They can go to stackskincare.com. They can go to sephora.com. Um, and they can also go to Amazon. Um, if you have global listeners, we're on Amazon UK. Yes. We also ship um, worldwide from our website. And okay. we're about to launch some cool things um, globally too. So, but yeah, you can go to stackscenecare.com, Sephora or Amazon. You know, it's really exciting. I want to mention that because I get the report. We do have global listeners and everywhere. We've got them in Africa and in Asia, um, India, India, Germany, um, all over Europe. Uh, I want to thank you all. I'll take this moment to thank you all for listening. I love that support. Um, Carrie, I want to thank you also for being on, for coming up with my favorite tool. Is Can you tell us, like, is there something next in the pipeline? Um, we, I do have a product roadmap for next year in terms of um, what will be coming out. We'll just have to stay tuned. But okay. we are launching... Um, just in a couple of weeks, a really beautiful fermented um, Japanese face oil that I think you're going to love and I'm going to have to share it with you. And then we've got a few fun things coming up in 2022 as well. But And she's got some other great tools. Like I said, um, go to Stack Skincare, check them out. Um, skincare products as well to stack along with this device. Um, and if you have questions, again, that you want me to ask Carrie, I'm always happy to do that. You can email me at hello at Art Beauty Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube at Art Beauty Podcast. Carrie, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on. Thank you. And thank everyone you. listening, we will see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.